there's no better way to get better at football than playing football. So if you want to... Taylor's going to finish it! I've always been confident in my abilities. I think, you know, I'm a guy that can go out there and I always believe in myself that I'm going to get open and, and make the play if they throw me the ball. The third. Ryan, end zone shot for Pierce. He caught it! Oh, what a... Hello, everyone, and welcome to Colts Cast. We're here to talk about everything and anything Indianapolis Colts. My name is Eric Smith, co-host of the Colts Cast. Alongside me, as always, I have co-host Jamal Lawrence here. What up? Yo, yo, if you're on YouTube, please ring that bell with the subscribe button right now. Don't forget to give us a like and comment below throughout the video with your thoughts. That's the best way to support us. And guys, it's completely free. All right, Colts Nation. Not a lot's really happened. I picked up some a few, a few people in free agency, but um, just just death players. Uh, you guys probably already heard about them, but um, it, it it's time. It's April. You know, it's April second for us. We're officially in NFL draft mode. What does the Colts cast NFL mock draft look like? Mm. Let's break it all down right now. Today we're going to be doing a quick, very quick three round mock draft. This is our mock draft. This is who we're speculating on will be available and who the Indianapolis Colts will end up selecting ultimately in the draft. Uh, this might get shaken up in the next few weeks. Now, this is our first mock draft that we've done. Uh, so th this is where we are. Me and Jamal, this is where we are right now. So, again, might not agree, but that this is who we think the Colts should take. Uh, Jamal, you want to kick us off with the first round pick with the number four overall pick? Let's do it. Culture on the clock, first round pick. Oh, we didn't boom, boom. get jumped for number three, so we got our we got our people in place. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so the Cardinals end up taking Will Anderson. Yeah, I'm assuming so C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young are gone. That's right. So with the next pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Richardson, quarterback from Florida. Hey, hey. let's get it. Listen, guys, we we've been talking about him since. Well, Eric's been Eric's been talking about him since before his his pro or his combine day. Yeah, remember when Jamal? Yeah, wasn't I messing with him at all. I, you're right. You're right. I said it multiple times, <laughs> and then and then you know I, I saw I saw Goliath when I was at, <laughs> <laughs> no David <just> <laughs> right. No, but seriously, guys. I mean, I think this is a situation where, as we talked about plenty of times before, if he is there. Um, you know, we got to go with we got to go with what's the, the best available quarterback for us at that time. And I think that he fits that build uh, to the T. He he has he has every attribute that we need and and we bring everything to the table that he needs as well. It's very mutual agreement. I don't think this is a situation where one party is going to be happier or one party is going to be upset. One party is going to be happy. This is like a, a, a happy household for everybody. We're bringing in a quarterback who can who can run, who can throw, who can who can kind of run our RPO, or he can run the RPO for us. We're, and then we're bringing in a quarterback, or I should say this quarterback's coming to a team where it's well-established, where they have a run game, they have a, a, a solid defense, just a couple small pieces of the puzzle that need to be fixed across the board, but a leadership team that wants to see them succeed. If I was a quarterback in the draft, I'll be very happy coming into this new situation um, that, the, that the Colts are presenting. Yeah, look, uh, this would probably be, I think, best case scenario for us. Yeah. Um, look, the Cardinals might, and everyone needs to understand this. There might be a team that jumps the Cardinals that that well, not jumps us, jumps us, and trades with the Cardinals to select QB three of the draft. Now, I think the Cardinals will maybe just sit put, sit put, and I think that's what we're heading out here. But look, it, it, it's time, everyone. We need our quarterback of the future. I mean, it's Shane Steichen's season this year, and he starts his head coaching career with developing Anthony Richardson. With this pick, you know, we get the most athletic quarterback in NFL history. I, I think I would argue to say that. Tell me who has more upside than that. You let me know. So I think that pick is dependent on Steichen's ability to develop quarterbacks, not just Steichen, but his coaching staff as well. And a lot of people peg Jalen Hurts as a backup. And when that was his ceiling when he was drafted, he was going to be a great backup. Look at him now. Just look at him. Give me the uniquely talented dual threat in Anthony Richardson, who has all the physical tools you want. I I just don't – you don't want to regret missing out on this opportunity. I, I think 
this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, he's raw. We get it. He's going to be a project. Don't expect him to start week one, but boy, what he could mold out to be in the future, I think we have to take a chance on him. So, I mean, he could possibly sit out his rookie season as well. So, yeah, 13 games on his belt, I think, in college. It's not a lot. Yeah, that's why that's why you got a guy in Gardner Minshew back there to uh to who can step up and be available when needed. I mean, if it's if that's his strong for the taking for the first half of the season, it is what it is. Uh, like you said, we work on those things, we develop him, get him better because there's nothing worse than setting him up for failure by just throwing him to the wolves. Uh, we've seen that happen plenty of time with, with positions across the board, but especially these early picks. You know, sometimes they just get put in a very bad situation. So uh, if we have the ability to avoid setting him up for failure, then don't do it. Do what we got to do. Pick him up. And teach them exactly. Let's move on to the second round. If we get to the first round, we're we're right back up. Number thirty five overall pick, Jamal. Who who are we selecting up there? This one I'm excited about because, unfortunately for him, because he was I, I think he wasn't be projected to go you know a little earlier, but uh, some things happen and he could fall into Colts laps. And and anybody who's a Colts fan knows that Chris Ballard loves the defensive side of the ball. He says it day in and day out. So why not go ahead and pick up a replacement for our hometown South Carolina boy, uh, Stephon Gilmore, with Cam Smith, cornerback. Hey. I yeah, go go ahead, go ahead. Oh hey, I mean listen, I I've watched film on him a billion times. I mean we're talking about the guy six one, you know, one hundred eighty pounds. He can still put on a little weight. Runs a four four three. Anybody who hadn't watched any film on him, you need to go back and watch. I mean, this dude is explosive. He ain't afraid to tackle anybody. He he watches. He he can jump any route. Um, he is just that that guy. Like he can read the place. He any anything you need him to do, he can play zone. He can play man. He he is all over the field for you. I think when I think of him, you know, some of the things I I personally don't like, which I guess this could have hurt him. Um, you know, he definitely leaves a bit of a cushion on, on sometimes with a quarterback or excuse me, with the wide receiver. But with that being said, he also has the ability to cover that ground with that four or three. So he can make up that ground and stop a play at a four or five yard gain versus giving up a big 30, 35 yard um, bomb. So that that's that's not that big of a deal to me. You know, I'll take his his shiftiness and the way he can explode and get to the ball. I mean, I, he does it on special teams too, blocking kicks. You know, blocking extra points, blocking field goals. This dude is he he's different. I, and I like him a lot. Yeah, Cam Smith is great. Uh given the sudden need at cornerback since the free agency. Yeah, I, I think we have to take a shot right here to fill that void. Give me Cam Smith if he's available. Uh, just like you said, uh, he 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 could have been the first cornerback, you know, taken. That that's what early mock drafts were looking like, but we have a th this is a deep cornerback class and it's loaded this year and a lot of cornerbacks have jumped up. Not saying Cam Smith has necessarily gone down, but a lot of corners have jumped up. So we got to take a shot to acquire a lockdown corner. He's a fierce competitor, has great ball skills, plays with those natural instincts, got that good change of direction speed. It's very experienced too. He's, he's been playing at Carolina for a while. I thought, you know, he could be a better tackler. Uh, just my opinion. Um, and then also he had a lot of penalties. Yeah. You know, but I, I believe these things can be coached. So that, you know, that's that's where Gus Bradley and the coaching mm -hmm. staff come in. I I think he consistently performed well against top notch receivers in the SEC. And we always talk about the SEC being the powerhouse of college, the, the probably top notch conference. Uh, I think I think he has first round value. And, you know, if he falls to us at 35, we have to take him. I think we have to take him. Agreed. What about that? What about rounding this uh, quick three round mock draft up? You know, we got number 79 pick, came from the Washington Commanders. That was from the Wentz trade, right? Right. Yep. So it, it's a it's a later, it's a later third round pick. Jamal, who are we looking at there? What position? This this is a this is a tough one. I had a, a lot of opinions on this, but I think that the Colts in the situation, you gotta you gotta go a tackle. You gotta go tackle Blake Freeland, BYU, a giant, six eight, three hundred two. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, dude's huge, and I mean he can pick up more weight again, just like I was saying about Cam Smith. He can put on more weight. Um, for, for, first off, this guy was a shot put and javelin state champion in high school, and people may have asked, well, what does that matter? You gotta understand how shot put. 
and javelin trans transitions or translate into football. So you have to use you're learning how to use your hips, your force, and your and your pushing. I mean, you're pushing like a 16 pound ball from your neck. So your hands are tight. They're right here tight, and you're pushing it from your neck and exploding through. So that literally it it doesn't qu quite mimic where your hands go for a shoulder pass, but essentially it's tight. You're learning how to push through and explode through using your hips, using your body to turn and twist. So that Talking is from experience, huh? Yes, you this is a little it. bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so this trans it translates right into what we need for him. Uh, and I think that this is a guy who could come out there and and do some things for us. Like I said, prototypical size, good for work in the run game. I, I mean, I don't know if you, if you watch any of his film, but his cutoff blocks, phenomenal. I mean, that's one thing he is great at, stepping inside um, and and just taking it to the to the next level, which would be great for having him and Nelson beside each other. You scoop blocking, you work it, or you combo blocking up to the to the second level. It looks good. Um, some of the cons for him, though, I will say his footwork in past setting is not that good. I did notice when I was kind of watching some of his senior bowl film, he was getting beat inside. And that is it is a it is a very defensive lineman friendly uh, drill because there's nobody there. You don't have your guard stepping down to help you. And, and obviously the defense's job is to only get inside. Like, you know, they're not running any kind of crazy stunts on you. They're just trying to get inside to the to the quarterback uh but i say that because i noticed that his shoulders turned a lot more than his feet his feet weren't moving with him now again those are things that can be correct that's a footwork uh issue where i think that learning how to sit farther back and and anticipating where you're supposed to be maybe you can tighten down your split a little bit more can help you out once you get to that next level uh and then my really my only other con for him is his height i mean six eight I know it's kind of hard to to get down to a level maybe of a 5'11 defender, you know, um, a defensive end because they, they're going to be low. I don't know anybody ever watched film on Dwight Feeney, Robert Mathis, you know, J.J. Watt, these guys, man, they all get low, 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 low. So you got to be able to really hunker down in the pass setting. And the run setting, I'm not, again, I'm not so much worried about. What defensive end going to be 5'11"? I don't know. Uh, there's going to be somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but 6'8". Uh, Maybe Fine. a corner, but so what are we gonna say? Somebody six two, six three. Yeah, I mean that they're, they're around. Yeah, yeah. My point is, is when you when you're six eight and you're gonna be standing up in a pass block setting, you're gonna now you're gonna be. He's probably gonna be squatting down to a, I don't know, maybe like a, a six five height. But a defensive lineman, even at a six two or six three, they're gonna be on the level of a five eleven person. So they're gonna be shrunken down. I guess is what I'm getting at. But the run play, you're gonna be coming off the ball low and harder. So it will make sense that he that shouldn't be a problem for him. But those are legit my only concerns uh for Eric about him. Okay. You you know it best. Um, but yeah, he is he is very tall. But yeah, offensive tackle out of BYU is combine. Yeah, that's where course. that's where he yeah. That's where he was flashing that 37 mm -hmm. inch vertical. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's higher than like some, some receivers. receivers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the highest mark by an offensive lineman since the NFL started tracking combine data. That's, that's crazy. crazy. According to PFF, he allowed one sack in three years with nearly 2,200 offensive snaps playing at BYU. Big guy, like you said, he's mountain, 6'8, 300 pounds. I think he can gain some more weight. I think mm -hmm. at that height, you, you can probably – and being an offensive lineman, you can definitely pack on some more weight there. I look at him as like a developmental prospect. You know, sure. uh, he's, he's got a lot of those uncoach, uncoachable traits like size and athleticism. High ceiling tackle in my opinion. And, you know, Ballard likes those pure athletes. So I'm sure when that 37-inch vertical hit, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, explosion. Like he's very strong down. I like it. It means a lot uh, to Ballard, yeah. and he has experience helping protect people like Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall in college. So you know he can definitely start out. You know at first as our swing tackle, maybe because I I think Bernard Raymond and Braden Smith have left tackle and right tackle locked down, but get him developed and adjusted to NFL. I think I think he can be a starter one day. Don't know if he'll you know leapfrog one of them, but it's. You know, I, you, you can't, can't be mad at a, at a decent swing, swing tackle in the third round. For sure. And, and, and Colts nation, hear me out on this. Hear me out, Eric. I think, you know, exactly where I'm going with this again, may not be, may not be right now this very second. However, 
give him a chance to learn, like you said, swing tackle it out. But then we can possibly, possibly look at moving uh, Ryman down to guard, to right guard. I think that would be as an interior lineman. I think he would thrive there. I mean, we're talking about a guy who he only played tackle for two years. You know, uh, when he was at Central Michigan, put him in that IOL spot. You got Nelson as your mentor to to kind of put take under your wing. I think he would thrive in between a center and a tackle. I, I personally do. I think that he would just be that that missing piece to the puzzle. Um, and then if you pick up this a new tackle in Blake where they can get out there and learn. Again, I'm not saying that it can happen this year. Obviously, we know Ryman kind of got tossed to the wolves this year, and he had to learn on his feet. Um, it could it could benefit. That could bring your line back to a solid piece. And I know a lot of people will say, well, he's already been playing tackle this last year. Why well, we want to move him? That Dude, that, that's just the way life works. And a lineman, a lineman can technically play all five positions. You don't really see that many go from guard to tackle to center. But yeah. guards and tackles, they they rotate through a lot. You'd be surprised. A lot of linemen who play tackle in college get bumped down the guard because they just are better at an interior spot versus that that exterior. So I I would not be opposed to having Ryman drop down to to right guard, and then you know eventually um, Blake getting a chance to play that left tackle. I agree with you. I mean, let's experiment. It's it's Steichen's first season. Let's see what they want to do like what they think is best for that O-line. Um, anything's Bob, probably better than last year. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. But guys, that guys and gals, that's that's our three round mock draft. April 2nd, 2023. You know, we got a few weeks until NFL draft, but you know, exciting. I know it really is. And I think, you know, Anthony Richardson, Cam Smith, Blake Freeland, that that would be a solid draft for us. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamal would have to agree as well. But we'll see. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, everybody, for listening to us today. That's going to be yeah. it for us. Uh, we're live on Apple Podcasts, but by YouTube, and we're going to use this podcast. And we'll be back next time to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content. You guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yeah, take care.